Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. My career counseling clients' most common questions haven't changed much, but their level of urgency has. Here are two such questions and my responses. The client asks, I hate my job, but I'm scared to quit amid corona, with employers laying off people or going out of business. I worry that an employer with a good job won't hire me over the many other people looking for work. What should I do? Here's my response. Let's assume you're wise in wanting to stay put, at least for now. Might any of these be worth trying or retrying? A sit-down with your boss in which you tactfully suggest ways that you could be more helpful to the organization, which would also make you a more contented employee, for example. Trade tasks you dislike for those you like better. For example, if you dislike handling client complaints but are good at detailed paperwork, maybe there's a coworker who's the opposite. Maybe you'd ask your boss whether you could work with, supervise, or report even to someone else. Increase or decrease accountability. Would you be less, uh, would you be happier and more successful if you had more oversight? Less oversight? Might you want to ask whether you could reduce your exposure to your main pain point? For example, if your main annoyance is your boss or a particular coworker or a supervisee, is there a way you could interact less with that person? For example, by moving your desk, being on a different committee, or communicating more by email than in real time? Do think twice before blaming the boss or suggesting something that's too unlikely to be agreed to. Usually it is wise to make your request tactfully, but very occasionally, if the request is important enough and the boss is unreasonably complacent in his or her rectitude, Assess whether it's worth the risk of being blunt, even threatening to go to your boss's boss. Here's the other question of, that my clients have been asking a lot that uh, I want to share with you and my response. The client says, I've been let go amid all the corona, so-called downsizings. Everyone says that especially in this time of corona, when employers are having to let so many people go, that networking is key. But my networking efforts have never produced enough to be worth the effort. Any advice? <clears throat> my response. Even before the corona economic shutdown, most good jobs go to people who know or were referred to the hiring person. That's mainly because the candidate is a more known quantity than often is revealed in an unknown candidate's job application. Maybe your subsequent networking efforts are going to be more successful if you remember that before asking for a lead or a job, you need to reveal yourself as a capable and helpful person, perhaps even first offering to be of help to that person. Also, your networking efforts are more likely to pay off if you're systematic about it. For example, step one, develop a 10 and a 30 second explanation of what you're looking for and, if you're, and that you're a person worth touting. For example, I've always gotten good evaluations, but because my company isn't strong, they let me go because as an HR generalist, my function doesn't directly generate revenue. <clears throat> I do have strong skills in recruiting, in benefits, and in mentoring. Might you know somebody I should speak with? Step two, using a spreadsheet or just a word file, in the first column, list at least a dozen people who like you they needn't be in a position to hire you. They may know someone. Step three. In the next column, write how you should contact them by phone, text, video, and subject to shelter in place rules in person. Step four. After you've contacted a person in the next column, write the date you should follow up. That's commonly somewhere between a week and a month. And finally, step five. In the next column, write anything you want to remember about your interaction, especially anything about you that that person was impressed with, plus anything you might do to be helpful to that person. Of course, you need to also do the standard things. Have a LinkedIn profile whose headline, summary, and headshot would attract your target employer. And when it doesn't feel toadying, writing a thank you note to people you spoke with. Now, if you truly lack the je ne sais quoi and motivation to network, You'll need to put extra effort into crafting compelling responses to job ads. Of course, that means a resume and cover letter customized to the position, including keywords drawn from the ad. 
but it may also require including a piece of collateral material, for example, a work product that would impress the target employer, or a white paper in which you summarize your field's best practice. When you get a serious job interview, prepare by recalling a few one-minute PAR stories to tell as appropriate. PAR is an acronym that stands for a problem you face that's relevant to the job, the clever or dogged approach you took to address it, and the positive result. Also think of how you would answer tough questions. For example, why have you been unemployed so long? Or walk me through the details of a tough project that you tackled but ultimately failed at. Of course, there never are guarantees, but executing on the above tactics should put the odds in your favor of landing an appropriate position. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button and share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.